Hello and welcome to ACF Frontend. In this tutorial, I want to cover how you can allow your users to add and edit posts from the front end. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, first off, you might not want to give your users access to the WordPress dashboard. You might also not want to have to train them how to use the WordPress dashboard. As you can see, I have a lot of tabs over here. I don't want to have to go through everything. I just want a form where they can add a post and another form where they can edit posts. So I'm going to show you how that, how that works and how you can set it up. Here's the page where I have a add post form, which allows my users to add posts. And as you can see, there's a title field, a content field, featured image field, and a categories field. My users can fill out all these fields and submit posts, and then they will have a post either published or saved as a draft or pending review, depending on how I configure it. So first off, what plugins do I need? So as you can see, I have ACF frontend installed. That's obviously a requirement. And now I'm using version 2.8. In addition, I need advanced custom fields, as ACF Frontend is built on advanced custom fields. And I'm using version 5.9. You also need an Elementor Pro, and I'm using versions 3.0. All right, so search for the new post form. Here we go. Drag and drop onto the page. Now, as you can see, I have here a form with a title content, featured image field, and the categories field. That's by default. I can also add new fields and I have control over the form title and the submit button text. There are many, many options in this widget, but in this tutorial, we're just going to cover some of the basic options. And in future tutorials, we're going to cover more of the advanced options. So first off the form title, you can make this whatever you want. You can say, add a new post. You can also make this the, the dynamic. I'm going to choose the post title which is the page title, so it's add a post. You also have the option just by leaving it blank. There we go. We're just going to leave it empty, and you might want to add a heading widget with your own text. Now, let's talk about the fields. So we have here the title field, and there are various options in the title field. There's a label. You can add a placeholder, add a title. You can add a default value, so if you want default value can be post title or you can have it be the post date for example you can add instructions so you add a title to this post and then that's instructions you can also have this field be hidden or read only where only the text will show and the, the users won't have any option to change the text okay so let's go into the content field the content field has different options, also has a label and instruction. And you also have the option to decide what kind of type text area field will be, either text area or text editor. Text editor gives your users options like uh, adding headings. And I'll show you that in action. Here I have the text editor and the user can choose a heading and then add a paragraph. Whereas if it was just a text area field, your users won't have, wouldn't have that option. The post content as well has uh, the basic options like required, hidden, disabled. Now let's go into the featured image. Featured image field is similar to the other fields, except that it has an option to add a default featured image. This can work together with the hidden option, so you can hide the featured image field and add a default featured image, which will be the same image for all the posts. So let's add a, add a default image, and we'll say this is going to be the default image. Or you can have it showing, and if the user decides not to add an image, it will show this image in instead. Let's go into Categories field. So the Categories field allows your users to choose categories. It has all the basic options that the other fields have. And in addition, you can choose the appearance. So either check boxes like we have here, or multi-select, which will give them a drop-down of all of the categories. You also have the option to add a term, which means users can add their own categories from the front end. We're going to add that in and we'll, we'll see it in action. You have a little button here. In addition, you have an option to add more fields. So you can add either ACF fields, ACF field groups, or a number of other post fields. So for example, published on, meaning when was this published? So that's a date field, a post author, tags, post excerpt, and so on and so forth. In the future tutorials, we're going to cover more of the, the default post fields and also how to add ACF fields to the front end forms, but that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Here I have the option to change the submit button text. So I can 
Okay, submit post. There we go. Let's go into the actions tab. So here I have many options. Let's just cover two of them. Redirect after submit and show success message. So first, redirect after submit. So I can either have it reload the current page or redirect the user to the post URL. I'm going to choose that option, post URL, and this way my users will be redirected to the new post upon submission. Here I have the option to show a success message upon submission. So here it's going to take me to the new post URL and then it's going to sh show a, a success message. And I can have it say whatever I want. Your post has been added successfully. I can also have it say something dynamic. So this is a cool trick. Your post and I can have the title show in the success message. So in order to do that, put the content into brackets and type post colon title. Place here, opening bracket, post, colon, title, closing bracket. And then it's going to give me the name of the post inside the success message. Now we're going to go into the post tab. So here we have just a few options. We have a post status. So I'm going to choose publish. And by default, it's going to be published. You can also choose for it to be draft or private or pending review. Here we have the new post type. So what's going to be the type of the post? So it can either be post or any of the other post types you have, either from a third-party plugins or from the custom post type UI plugin. And in addition, we also have the option to add default post terms and also to add a save as draft option. We're going to cover those in future tutorials. Let's go into the permissions tab. And this is very important. By default, the form will only show to administrators. In order for it to show to users of other roles, you have to add those roles here. Editor, I'm going to add editor and author. And now it will show to anyone who's an administrator or an editor or an author. Now we covered all the basic options. Let's go into the modal window. Here you have an option to show the form inside of a little pop-up. Click show on modal. And now the whole entire form will be inside a little button. And you can change the button text to anything you'd like. Call it add post. And I'm going to add an icon. Look for the plus sign. There we go. Plus. Now, there's no space between the icon and the text, so just add a space before add posts. And that way, there'll be a little space between them. All right, so now we're going to see the form in action. We have here the default title. They can add a title to this post, so we're going to call it my post number eight. And here I have the content, say Lauren Ipsum. We have the default featured image. So we're just going to leave that, and we're going to make it categories two and three and the user submits a post and gets redirected to the new post page there we go now as you see i have a success message here my post number eight that's the title of the post has been added successfully here i have the post title post content and the post featured image thank you for watching if you found this video useful please give us a like and subscribe to our channel